literally like lightning and then immediately hear the bang. You know like the adrenaline that you get when you're like that close to a freaking thunderstorm? Like your heart is just beating like through your freaking chest. What's up everybody? I don't know what that is. It's me, Kyle. I don't know why I'm so excited right now. This is a video about like bad shit, like almost dying and stuff, but though backpacking is much safer than an un... <laughs> much safer than an... What? Though backpacking is much safer than an uneducated person might think. It's true, bad stuff does happen sometimes, and this is gonna be a video going over the two most like dangerous situations I ever found myself in while backpacking. And of course, I'm gonna talk about what I did wrong in these situations that kind of led to me being in them in the first place. My two biggest backpacking mistakes. And with that said, make sure you subscribe if you like people who make stupid mistakes, which I hope you don't, but hopefully you like people that learn from them like I did and hopefully you're about to do. Comment, say how stupid I am for this stuff. Anyways, let's get into story number one. So some of you that watch this channel on the regular for some reason probably know that I started backpacking when I was pretty young. I was like 16, first getting into it, had absolutely no idea what I was doing and that is the age range that this first story falls in. So. Again, in other videos I've talked about how stupid I was when I was younger and, and a lot of the dumb things that I did or thought I knew or whatever. But uh, this was one of the few things I did at that age that wasn't just like kind of stupid and dumb. It was like downright dangerous, honestly, and I'm not proud of it. It was November of 2012, a long freaking time ago now. I was doing an overnight hike with my friend Dan, trying to section hike the long trail. When I left my house, you know, kind of down in the valley, there was no snow on the ground. It was a little bit cold. There was certainly no leaves on the trees anymore. Like it was solidly like late fall, but things looked fine, right? It wasn't like freezing temperatures. It was okay. But by the time we got to Jay Pass, which is a pretty high pass in Northern Vermont on the long trail, there was snow on the ground. The temperature was significantly lower than the house that we had freaking left from. Knowing what I know now, I would have told my mom, who was the one that drove us up there, again, 16, drink again. Um, I would have told my mom to just turn the car around right then and there. I mean, we were not prepared for temperatures this low. We were not prepared for snow and like dealing with ice and all this stuff. I don't remember exactly how much snow there was. Probably not enough to need snowshoes, but definitely enough where we should have had micro spikes because again there was also some ice and stuff and we didn't have any of that we had you know maybe just a like an outer shell a fleece and the worst part about this story is that i had cotton track pants on <laughs> i was not wearing the proper pants at all you can probably already tell where this story is going it was cold it was wet and i was wearing cotton the entire day we were basically just like slipping and falling on our ass like every two seconds we didn't see any other hikers out there it was a weekend too like literally no one else was stupid enough to do what we were doing and somehow we made it through the day without breaking a bone or like getting lost and just like completely f***ing ourselves over we made it to our campsite that night which was a place called tillotson camp on the Vermont Long Trail. We got there just before it started to get dark and as we're kind of setting our stuff up in this shelter, a hunter kind of pops his head in just to kind of check out what was going on. And he saw us and he was like pretty confused at what the hell we were doing. I don't think that he really believed at first that these like two 16 year old goofy ass kids were about to try to spend the night like out in these freezing cold temperatures all by themselves. He was kind of just like, are you guys okay? Like, what's going on here? We were like, oh yeah, we're fine, dude. No worries, like, we're, we're totally good. And what I didn't really realize at this point is that my body was still, like, kind of going from the hiking. Like, we hadn't been in camp for too long. My heart rate was still up. I was still relatively warm. But shortly after we kind of shooed this hunter guy, this very concerned hunter guy off, it kind of started to set in for me that this was gonna be a miserable, miserable fucking night. Obviously my cotton pants had just absorbed all the freaking water, all the snow that I'd been trudging through all day. And once my body temperature started to cool down, 
I just became like super, super freezing and I got into my sleeping bag. I put on all the clothes I had, but it really didn't help that much. Like I was just, just really, really cold, like shivering, just really, really bad situation. A little bit scary, honestly. Soon after we crawled into our sleeping bags for the night, it became very apparent to me that I was not going to get any sleep at all. I was literally just gonna lay there shivering, my teeth rattling the entire freaking night. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. I still remember the moment the sun kind of like crept into the lean-to that first time the next morning, Dan and I just both kind of like looked at each other and we were immediately awake. Like we had both been awake for hours before this, just waiting for that moment because it was just so freaking cold and like I said, I was, you know, beginning stages of hypothermia. If the temperature had been even colder that night or if I had just brought one less layer of clothing, like dude, I would have really been fucked. We made it out of camp that morning, extremely exhausted, but we did it nonetheless. We climbed up the Belvedere fire tower and got back down to the road a few hours later safely. This was the hike where I kind of realized that some serious shit can actually kind of go down when you're backpacking if you make dumb mistakes like this. Now, the obvious thing to highlight here is just that cotton kills. I mean, I'm sure you've heard that expression before, like don't wear cotton, especially like especially when it's, you know, shoulder season or certainly winter, like don't wear cotton, bad idea. I don't really wanna harp on that too much because that's just such an obvious like takeaway from this. What I really wanna kind of make clear here is that the beginning stages of one's backpacking like journey, I guess you want to call it, is the point where you're at a high risk of shit kind of really going wrong, shit really hitting the fan. Of course, it also doesn't help when you're like 16 and just dumb and make stupid choices, but even beyond just that, it doesn't matter what age you're at, it is real easy to get cocky at the beginning like this. I, I thought like, how hard can it be? You know, I've got a 30 degree sleeping bag. I've got, you know, all these layers and stuff like, I'll be fine and I, I was just ignorant of a lot of things that I should have known before I went out there. And with that said, let's get into my second story which involves thunder, it involves lightning, and river crossing. So this story takes place a few years after the one I just told. This one happened in August of 2015. So I think I was 19 years old at the time. I had a little bit more experience under my belt but I still would not say that I really knew exactly what I was doing, which became very obvious based on my actions in this story. Again, going back to like the levels of risk that are associated with whatever part of your backpacking journey you're in, if that makes any sense at all, right? Maybe I'll make like a chart or something to try to make this clear, but I feel like when you first start out and you have no experience and you don't really know what you're doing, the risk is high and like your cockiness is kind of high. And then as you get more experience, that risk kind of goes down a little bit with the cockiness because you start to realize that you don't know what you're doing and you kind of take a lot more precautions, I guess, because of that. But then eventually you get to the point, or at least I got to a point where I thought I knew like what I was doing. Like that cockiness went like right back up to where it was when I first started. However, I still didn't realize that I wasn't experienced enough yet to avoid the mistakes that I'm about to talk about in this next story. At this point, I was probably like halfway done peak bagging the New Hampshire 48, all the 4,000 footers in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. And I really wanted to tag this one called Owl's Head. Because it was like 18 miles round trip, I wanted to do it as an overnight. Nowadays, I'd probably just bang that shit out in a day. But at the time, that's what I wanted to do. And I was also with my girlfriend at the time who, she wasn't like an inexperienced hiker. She had done like some, some decently difficult hikes before this, but I don't think she had ever backpacked before. I'm pretty sure this was like her first backpacking trip ever. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, First backpacking trips never like go well. And I actually have another video talking about my first backpacking trip, which I'll link right here. <laughs> so the rough plan was to leave from the Lincoln Woods trailhead, head towards Owl's Head. And I think the first like seven-ish miles, I might have to look at the map maybe. I don't know if you can, you can see this. Probably not. Like the first seven and a half or eight miles, whatever, went by fine. It's all pretty flat and we had to cross a number of rivers that had no bridges, so we were fording the rivers and, and honestly, they were some of the more aggressive fords I had done. Honestly, still to this day, probably. They weren't like Sierras when the snow's melting rough, but for like East Coast or even just White Mountain standards, they were 
decently difficult, I guess, but we made it through just fine. We got to the herd path where you start to climb up to the actual summit of Owl's Head. And it's basically just like a slide. It was pretty rough going, honestly. It was super steep. Again, it's a herd path, so it's not like a real trail. And so it just kind of kicked our asses, but we got up it, we got back down it, and right before we got to the bottom, say like five minutes before we got to the bottom, I looked up and sure enough, there were some super, super nasty clouds coming directly towards us. We ended up back down below the tree cover, and at that point, it became very apparent that we were about to get freaking crushed by a thunderstorm. I should have right there and then stopped us and set our tent up and just called the day. Like we could have easily made the hike out the next morning. We had all of our overnight gear. I don't know why I didn't just do that. Like it was so stupid. We were literally at a perfect campsite too. Like there was flat ground for a tent. There was a water source right there. I'm, I'm just gonna blow a huge hole right through my ego here, honestly, but when I saw that storm coming, I was like kind of scared. Like I, I held it together decently, but I, I hate thunderstorms still to this day. I hate being outside during thunderstorms. I got this crazy idea in my head in that moment that we could just like out hike the storm somehow, which is stupid. Like I'm not gonna hike faster than a freaking thunderstorm. We should have just stopped right there. I should have made that call, but I didn't. I decided that we're just gonna haul ass down the trail back towards the car. The, the, like seven, eight miles back towards the car, even though we had already hiked like a, almost a full day at this point, just so stupid. You know that like really unscientific way of like trying to tell how far away a thunderstorm is where like, so you see the flash, you see the lightning, and then you count like in your head, like one, two, and then however many seconds go by before you hear the thunder, that's like how far away the storm is, like that many miles. Well, there was absolutely like no time to count here. I'm saying like this shit was right on top of us literally like lightning and then immediately hear the bang. You know like the adrenaline that you get when you're like that close to a freaking thunderstorm, like your heart is just beating like through your freaking chest. I was just hauling ass. I was pushing myself to like my absolute limit at the time and I can only imagine what it was like for, for my girlfriend at the time because like she must have just been like, I feel like such a dick for this, but the most dangerous part of this story was actually when we went back across the river crossings I had mentioned a few minutes ago. Obviously it was pouring rain at this point and so those rivers kind of swelled up even more and crossing a like fast moving, like relatively deep river like that in a thunderstorm that's just raging around you, raging around you, raging around you, raging around you, is just a bad dangerous idea. I mean, First of all, okay, when you're rushing through it like that, you're not gonna be as careful to take the time to go across safely. The worst part about this, and, and honestly the part of the story that I'm like the most ashamed of is, this was not safe for my girlfriend at the time at all. I mean, she had, I'm pretty sure she had probably never like forded a river before, and here she is being led into one by me in a freaking thunderstorm while it's pouring rain, while the river is just absolutely raging, and like I said, there wasn't just one crossing. There was a couple, there, at least two or three, I think it was three river crossings that we had to do. So I like handed her my trekking poles to try to like help cross the river in that regard. But there's nothing that I could have done in this situation that would have made things safe besides just stopping and setting up the tent, like setting everything up and just freaking chilling. Like such a dumb and dangerous mistake that I made here. She made it through the rivers. We finally set up the tent somewhere, and at this point, all of our stuff was just completely soaked. Like, we might as well have just been sleeping outside in the rain, honestly. Like, it was just terrible. I guess the one fortunate thing about this story is that it was like the middle of the summer and it like was pretty warm, thankfully. So being soaking wet wasn't dangerous in like a hypothermia way. Like the temperatures were fine, but again, like if it had just been a couple months later, like this could have gone even more wrong. Absolutely no sleep was had that night, but we made it through. We hiked out the next day and we never ever went backpacking again. And I'm pretty sure that's why she broke up with me a few months later. And I keep tripping over my goddamn feet. So takeaways from this are just gonna be, don't take a first time backpacker on a difficult hike. I mean, sure, some people do that and they're fine, but generally speaking, it's just a bad idea. Second of all, don't be a idiot and try to out hike a thunderstorm like that's just not gonna happen and third just never underestimate river crossings I don't care what's going on around you I don't care how distracting a freaking lightning storm just taking a huge 
like right on top of you is you have to be deliberate and careful when crossing rivers. I hate to say it, but every single year people drown from river crossings on various hiking trails. So yeah, just hopefully you guys could learn something from this. Be safe out there. Subscribe if you want to hear more embarrassing, stupid stories from me because I've got plenty of them from when I was younger. So anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Smash like and I think that's gonna do it.